talk about spectral line broadening and the Doppler effect. First, an introduction about spectra in general. Uh, when we talk about the spectrum, we mean a spectrum over a range of different frequencies or wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation that are either emitted or absorbed by a material and that are characteristic of this material. It's either an emission or an absorption spectrum. An emission spectrum is the radiation that uh, comes from exciting the atoms of the, of the material and then when they relax they give radiation of specific wavelengths and frequencies. Uh, it's either that or the particles that we have used to excite the atoms uh, decelerate, change their direction of motion and give a continuous radiation. The absorption spectrum is uh, when we radiate a material again but then we detect the part of the radiation that was lost due to absorption and that is the dark lines that we see in the spectrum. This is an example of an emission spectrum where we have a fluorescent lamp irradiated and uh, we can see the edges, the characteristic lines showing the wavelengths where we had uh, emission and uh, we can see that the first two ones show us that uh, mercury was in that lamp and we can see that uh, the breadth is um, the lines are not very sharp this is an example of an absorption spectrum right uh, at the bottom of the image where the dark lines show the wavelengths where we had uh, absorption and this is for hydrogen the other ones are emission spectrums so from these images we can see that uh, even if we talk about specific wavelengths and frequencies where we have emission or absorption it's not very sharp lines but these lines extend over a range of wavelengths there are several reasons for this one of them is the Doppler effect the one that we're talking about another one is the natural breadth which is uh, that the energy of the levels of an atom are not very sharp but they have a natural breadth as well and there are several other external effects that can cause the same thing the most apparent um, example where we can see the Doppler effect is if we take the solar spectrum and uh, in particular two spectra one from the east and one from the west gleams of the sun the frequencies of the lines that we observe are not exactly, exactly the same but uh, have a bit of a difference this is because the sun rotates and uh, one part of it moves towards us and the other one moves away from us so this causes a shifting of wavelengths we can uh, calculate the difference be between the frequency that we observe and the frequency of the line if our material didn't move and it is given by this formula where theta is the angle between the direction of observation and the velocity of our material if we assume that uh, the velocities ha follow a Maxwell distribution then we can uh, calculate the probability of a velocity being uh, in a sharp region and this is the formula that gives that and uh, now if, if we combine these two formulas the one about the probability of the velocities and the one about the difference of frequencies we derive this very useful formula which give us, gives us the relative intensity of a spectral line as a function of the frequency and if we use that to make a graph we can see the general shape that the spectral line has uh, when it has been broadened by the Doppler effect the most important thing about this graph is the half intensity breadth which is the breadth at the half maximum of the intensity value and uh, from that formula we can uh, see that by increasing the temperature or by increasing the frequency that the line would have if we didn't have any motion then the broadening gets greater whereas if we increase the molecular weight of our material then the broadening is smaller
these are my difference. 